All right, tech family, with me is the new Dell XPS 9300. There is plenty to love about this laptop and it really could evolve into the best ultra portable ever, but it definitely is not there yet. Be warned. I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to actually own and use the laptops. These videos take a long time to make. If after watching the video, you like what you saw, make sure to smash that subscribe button, the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for what I do. I've been looking forward to this laptop for well over a year as I've been using the two year old Dell XPS 9370 for my everyday carry. I always regretted opting for only eight gig of RAM in my unit. So was looking forward to getting a unit with 16 gig. Plus I was looking forward to that gorgeous frost white color, which wasn't available two years ago and more screen real estate, a better keyboard and a more powerful GPU with Ice Lake. But I have been let down. There's a lot of issues to talk about, which I hope will be fixed in the future with patches and updates. Let's get into it. I'll start with the look and feel of the laptop as I opted to wait for the frost white version, which took a little longer. Boy, was it worth it. This laptop is a piece of art. There is no other way of describing it. The build quality and looks are on par or better than Apple's MacBook Pro and Razer Studio laptop. It really is a stunning machine. Form wise, it is substantially smaller than the Lenovo X1 Carbon 14 inch, which as you'll see later in my review, has a similar viewable screen for many applications. There are also no sharp edges. You can open with one hand, but I do miss the battery indicator on the outside of the laptop, which prior generations had. I don't mind the reduction from three USB-C ports on the prior model to two. I think that is plenty on a device like this. I really like how they are placed on either side as it means I can always have the power cable plugged in on the side where the wall socket is and I don't have to run a cable across the back of the laptop. Plus the inclusion of the mini SD card reader is appreciated. The 4K light display in the version I have is very nice, but not amazing. I got 93% sRGB and 73% Adobe RGB. It's advertised at 500 nits of brightness, but let me tell you, I don't think this is 500 nits. Just take a look at it next to my Aero 17 HDR and the older Dell XPS 9370. It's definitely not as bright as those. It's just bright enough in my opinion, although I frequently found myself pressing the brightness up button, hoping to get more out of it. The best thing about the display is the 16 by 10 aspect ratio with the increase to 13.4 inches. This provides the screen with seven inches of vertical space. The same as on the 14 inch Lenovo X1 Carbon, which is absolutely awesome. For many use cases, you are effectively getting a 14 inch laptop in a tiny body. The screen had no dead pixels, no PWM flickering when reducing the brightness and the backlight bleed was minimal. The keyboard is pretty good. It isn't as comfortable as Lenovo's X1 Carbon, but they did really well with a low travel keyboard. The layout is excellent. They got rid of those small page up and down keys that I'd frequently mispress above the left and right arrow on the older XPS. It's also backlit. The trackpad is very good and an improvement over the prior model, mainly due to the larger size. Don't expect MacBook good, but it's definitely good enough. Performance is bonkers. Seriously, look at my Geekbench scores. The new XPS mops the floor with the competition. Check out where the Surface Laptop 3 is compared to this laptop. It is really fast. In multi-core, it's only 18% slower than the six core i7 9750H in my Razer Blade Studio. While running Cinebench R20, you can see why this is the case. This CPU pulls a whopping 37 watts of power for a short period of time and then settles down at 25 watts. This is on best performance mode with a 60 millivolt undervolt, by the way. Here are my Cinebench R20 results, which further confirm this. My unit came with an Intel 660p SSD, which is an okay performing NVMe SSD, but certainly not as good as the Samsung drives. I replaced it with a top of the line Samsung 970 Pro and immediately noticed something odd. Although the performance was better than the Intel SSD, it was nowhere near where it should be. Here is what the Samsung 970 Pro should score. And here is what it scores in the Dell XPS 9300. There must be an issue here causing it to be bottlenecked and underperform on this laptop. I hope it can be fixed with a driver or BIOS update. 
On the GPU side, I was eager to see if this laptop with Intel's new integrated GPU performed much better for real world tasks like video exporting. So here it is compared with several video editing laptops. The answer is with current drivers, it's a disaster. Smaller bars are better here as you want a lower export time. I was so shocked I ran the test several times. I even ran it on software rendering as hardware rendering performed that bad. Even though timeline scrubbing on a 4K video was workable, given these export times, this is not a laptop that I can recommend for anything more than 1080 video editing. Also, I didn't have a lot of time to run my full suite of programming tests, but I did run a large database import, a common coding task. It also did not perform anywhere near as well as this laptop benchmarked. My hypothesis here is there are some issues to sort out in this laptop. All testing was done on the current BIOS, drivers and latest version of Windows. Let's switch gears and talk about fan noise and cooling. This is where I put a warning out to any prospective buyers. This laptop gets reasonably loud under load, which is excusable, but what's not is that once the fans spin up, it's almost impossible to get them back down to silent, even if you close every intensive application. What's worse is that the fans spin at a moderate pace for common tasks like watching Netflix videos. So when there's a silence in a movie, expect to hear the fans. Heck, they even spun up for a bit while writing this review in Microsoft Word. They also have a slight high pitch to them, so the noise is noticeable. This is not a quiet laptop like Lenovo's X1 Carbon or Apple's MacBook range. To be fair, it's also not a loud laptop, but you definitely do hear the fans very frequently and that isn't good if you plan to use this laptop in a quiet meeting room setting or like me, are sensitive to fan noise. Heck, my Aero 17 HDR spends most of its life in the closet behind me because of fan noise. In terms of cooling, it's okay. You'd certainly hope so given the fan noise. Under load, it hits 97 Celsius, likely due to drawing 37 watts of power, but then it settles down around the high 80 Celsius, which is about normal for this kind of laptop. That being said, what worries me is when watching Netflix or YouTube with the fans running a bit as discussed, the temps are higher than I'd like, often hitting high 50s or even 60 Celsius. Stability, here's another not ideal point. Although the laptop was generally stable, there were a lot of odd issues. First, open application and windows would sometimes become grayed out and I couldn't ungray them without a restart. After upgrading to the latest Intel graphics driver, which was a process, the issue happened less often, but it still happened. By the way, when trying to upgrade from Intel side, an error that you must go to the manufacturer's side to install will be shown. Unfortunately, Dell didn't have the latest version. So to get around this, download the zip version of the Intel graphics drivers, unzip it, then in device manager, select to upgrade from this computer. Second issue, the screen would often go black for a couple of moments when I plugged in the power or pulled it out. Third, I did have an occasional freeze like the one here. Fourth, there is a weird issue where when watching some videos like those embedded in Facebook, the video stopped playing after about three seconds. I could only get them to fully play when in full screen mode. Lastly, the laptop was unable to main stability on even a minor undervolt like minus 60 millivolts. Before people say, I have a lemon, I have checked Reddit and Dell's own review area and others are starting to report these issues. I would advise on waiting to purchase this laptop. Hopefully these issues can be improved with a BIOS update. Battery life is very good and you should be able to get easily eight hours if you aren't doing intensive tasks and dim the screen a little. Sound is good enough, it's loud and has decent quality. Unfortunately, the speakers are downward facing, so expect some loss of quality and volume when using the laptop on your lap. Overall, the sound doesn't compare to the top performing laptops like the MacBook Pros, but it won't hold you back either. Audio latency isn't great, so keep that in mind if that's important to you. The laptop's SSD is upgradable, but boy is this laptop hard to open even after you unscrew the back panel. The webcam is in the right place and acceptable quality for a laptop. Pricing. Be wary of Dell's rotating discounts. I originally purchased this laptop for around $2,350 including tax, but a week later discount codes enabled me to get the same configuration for $400 less. One thing I do like is the peace of mind of being able to add an extended next business day on-site repair warranty to this machine. Let me wrap up. 
This is a gorgeous laptop that could become the best small laptop ever released, but it's not there yet. It definitely needs work as there are a lot of issues to resolve. Purchasing it right now is a risk and I would advise you to wait to see if Dell releases fixes to these issues, in particular the fan noise. Dell, please add a quiet mode where the user can elect to dial down the CPU performance for silent operation. It's great that it performs so well, but the choice of performance versus quiet operation should be given to the user. If you do need a laptop like this right now, take a look at Lenovo's X1 Carbon with a 1080 screen. It's a more polished laptop that is production ready. I'll post my review of that laptop in the description below. Anyway, if you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. If you have questions, join the Discord chat or post them in the comments below. Till next time, I'll catch you later.